Good day, class. Welcome to our Modular Distance Learning in TLE 10, Quarter 3. For Lesson 1, Applying Recommended Kind and Rate of Fertilizer. These are the following objectives. Letter A, identify the kinds of fertilizers. Letter B, give the methods of fertilizer application. And letter C, appreciate the importance of composting. Okay, now, before we proceed to our lesson, try to look at these pictures and arrange these four jumbled words. Try to analyze what the pictures tells us. Okay, so we come up with these words. First, we have sun, air, water, and this last word is fertilizer. So these pictures explains how do plants live. First, they have to complete their life cycle and to maintain this healthy growth, we have to supply them the needs for air, water, and sun. And some essential elements to the plant growth are the fertilizer. Okay, now let us discuss the plant food. Plants and animals require food for growth and development. This food is composed of certain chemical elements, often referred to as plant food elements. Plant food refers to the necessary materials which a plant uses so it can build new tissues and at the same time carry on its normal functions. And according to McVicar, 1970, Fertilizer is any manufactured or processed material or mixture of materials that contains one or more of the recognized plant food elements in liquid or dry form. On the other hand, INGO 2005 claimed that a fertilizer is any organic or inorganic material of natural or synthetic origin which is added to the soil to supply certain elements essential to plant growth. Fertilizers are used to increase the growth rate, yield, and quality or nutritive value of plants. Now, let's proceed to the kinds of fertilizer. Number one, we have organic fertilizers. Organic fertilizers are farm manures, compost, crop residues, and other farm waste, which supply nutrients and improve soil physical conditions. Organic fertilizer is generally the most valuable soil conditioner. As soil conditioners, organic fertilizer helps prevent soil erosion, crushing and cracking of soil. And Sangatan and Sangatan 2000 explain that the sources of organic fertilizers are as follows. First, we have animal waste. These are from carabao, goat, poultry manure, and others. Next, we have crop waste. This include rice straw, stalks, weeds, plant leaves, and husk. Next, we have human inhabitation waste. The examples of this are night soil, sewage, and garbage. We also have green manure. It includes ipil ipil leaves, legumes, and mold.
Madre de Cacao Leaves. And we have water crops or plants. Examples of these are water lily, alligator, and water lettuce. We also have biological organic sources, which are the azolia and green algae. Also, we have silt, river mud, and pond mud. We also have byproduct of biogas, digester, digested sludge, and effluent and other sources are composed of animal bone, seaweeds, and bat manure. Now let's move on to the inorganic or chemical fertilizers. Usually Result from chemical processes such as sulfuric acid treatment or rock phosphate to produce superphosphate. It consists of materials processed or transformed into a chemical material or fertilizer. Okay, so what are the types of fertilizer based on the fertilizer element present? Number one, we have single element fertilizer contains only one of the major fertilizer elements. Examples of these are ammonium sulfate and superphosphate. Number two is incomplete fertilizer. It contains only two major elements like amorphous or nitrogen and phosphorus. And, and number three, we have complete fertilizer, which contains the three primary plant food elements, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, let's move on to the fertilizer application. Villegas and Malixi 1977 stated that to get the maximum benefit, the fertilizer must be applied where the plant can readily absorb it. Proper placement of a fertilizer will provide an efficient and continuous supply of plant nutrient and will prevent salt injury to the seedlings. Now, these are the methods of fertilizer application. Number one, we have broadcast method. The fertilizer material is applied uniformly over the entire area before planting or while the crop is growing. Top dressing refers to broadcast application on growing crops. This is an example of broadcast method. Uniform distribution of the fertilizer enables safe application of large quantities of fertilizer without injuring the crop. Next, number two, we have localized application. The fertilizer is applied close to the seed or plant, either in band adjacent to the plant rows or what we call the side resin, or by blow sole application. This illustrates the localized application. It is essential for high rate applications of high analysis fertilizers. Next, number three, we have foliar application. Plant nutrients may be applied on the aerial part of the plant. The dissolved nutrient must penetrate the cuticle of the leaf 
or the stomata and then enter the plant cells. This illustrates the foliar application method. It is usually employed only in applying micronutrients. Next number four, we have applied with the seed. Fertilizer is broadcast together with the seeds or the seeds are coated with fertilizer by means of an adhesive such as cellulose or gum arabic. This illustrates applying fertilizer with the seed. And next, we have number five, fertigation. This involves dissolving the fertilizer materials in water and then applying it with the use of a sprinkler. Okay, so this picture illustrates the fertigation method. Okay, now, let's move on to the methods of determining soil fertility. Training manual in horticulture, NC2 2007, lists the methods of determining soil fertility as follows. Number one, field fertilizer trials. As the term implies, Field fertilizer trial experiment is carried out in the field. It could be conducted in different places under different seasons. Number two, soil analysis. It is a rapid method of assessing the fertilizer needs of crops. The principle involved is that the amounts of available nutrients in the soil are directly related up to a critical point with the growth and yield of crop. Soil analysis consists of four phases, namely, number one, proper collection of soil samples, number two, chemical analysis, number three, interpretation of analytical results, and number four, formulation of fertilizer recommendation. Number three, we have plant tissue analysis. This is customarily made of fresh plant tissue in the field. It is a quick test and is important in the diagnosis of the needs of growing plants. The concentration of the nutrients in the cell sap is usually a good indication of how well the plant is supplied at the time of testing. And number four, nutrient deficiency symptom. An abnormal appearance of the growing plant may be caused by a deficiency of one or more nutrient elements. This visual method of evaluating soil fertility is unique and it requires no expensive equipment. Now, let's proceed to the methods of conserving soil fertility. Soil is one of the most important natural resources. We need to devise and implement ways of conserving soil. Now, these are the ways of conserving soil fertility. Number one, plant trees. These pictures illustrates roots of trees firmly hold on to the soil. As their roots spread deep into the layers of soil, they hold it tightly, thus preventing soil erosion. Number two, build terraces. Terracing is a very good method of soil conservation. Terracing gives the landmass a slight appearance, thus slowing the washing 
down of soil. Number three is no-till farming or zero tillage. This process is preparing soil for plowing. It is beneficial in mixing fertilizers in the soil, making rows and preparing the surface for planting. Number four, we have contour plowing. This method helps in slowing the water runoff and prevents soil from being washed away along the slope. Number five, we have crop rotation. It is a method of growing series of different crops one after another in a given area. It also helps improve soil structure and fertility. Number six is apply fertilizers. It involves applying fertilizer only when the crop is there or when it has just been planted. Number seven, utilize crop residues more effectively. Number eight, utilize manure more effectively. Number nine, watering the soil. Watering the soil along with plants growing in. It is a way to prevent soil erosion caused by wind. At number 10, mulching. It is used to retain moisture in the soil, suppress weeds, keep the soil cool, and make the garden bed look more attractive. Now, let's proceed to the importance of composting. Sangalang et al. 1977 claimed that the composting process involves the decomposition of organic materials to form small bits of organic matter called compost. The whole process is done by organisms that use organic matter principally as a source of carbon, and secondarily as a source of nitrogen and other elements for their growth and reproduction. Okay, now, what do compost organisms need? According to INGO 2005, the needs of the compost organisms are Number one, Balanced diet of compost materials. This includes browns. Browns are compost materials that are brown and dry. Examples of which are sawdust, dried leaves, straw, and small twigs and others. Browns are high in carbon, which for microbes are energy food. And also... Greens. Greens are compost materials that are green and moist like kitchen waste, grass cuttings, and the like. Greens are high in nitrogen, which microbes need to make proteins. Decompositions of a balanced diet of compost organisms. If you add about three parts to brown, to one part of greens, then the compost organisms will have a balanced diet. Number two is the right amount of air and water. If there is the right amount of oxygen and moisture, microbes can rapidly grow and multiply. If there is too much or too little water, then the microbes die. Number three is the right temperature. Organic materials will eventually decay even in a cold compost pile. However, 
the decay process is sped up in a hot compost pile. Okay, okay now. now, these are the methods of composting. Composting is the rotting down of plant and animal residues before it is applied to the soil. Number one, we have sheet composting. Sheet composting, also known as sheet mulching, can be a great way to add organic matter back into your soils. This technique is often used on a large scale. However, it can be also done successfully in your backyard. Number two, we have in-vessel composting. In-vessel composting is becoming more and more popular with large-scale compost producers. This method involves composting within an enclosed containment system, often a large cylindrical shaped container. Number three is anaerobic composting. Anaerobic composting describes the biological breakdown of organic materials by living anaerobic organisms. Some of the benefits of composting anaerobically include the following. It is one of the most basic means of producing compost. Number four, we have trench composting. Trench composting involves digging holes in your garden soil and burying raw compost ingredients. Similar to anaerobic composting, this method of decomposition is quite simple. However, the materials tend to take longer to break down than when using other composting techniques. Number five, we have Bokashi composting. Bokashi is a Japanese term meaning fermented organic matter. Therefore, Bokashi composting describes the making of compost via fermentation. To achieve optimal results, your compost materials are inoculated with a microbial starter culture and place inside a sealed container. Number six, we have composting barrels. Composting barrels or compost tumblers are a great composting technique for backyard growers. They are self-contained, cleaned, and if big, enough can produce a fair amount of compost in a short period. Number seven, we have verbi composting. Composting is the process of converting organic materials like leaves and animal manure into humus. An organic matter through decomposition by the action of microbes and other organisms. However, this can be accelerated to as short as 30 to 45 days by the use of earthworms to digest the organic materials. Okay, so what are the steps in vermicomposting? Letter A, gathering of materials. As the picture illustrates, composing materials such as rice straw, grass, leaves, kitchen waste, animal manure, and used mushroom substrates will be collected and shredded as the earthworm may not be able to digest them effectively. After which, some animal manures will be added to increase the nitrogen content of the materials. Letter B, we have 
selecting the side. The pictures illustrates the side should be airy, dry, near water source, and raw materials for the food of the earthworms. The temperature of the area should be around 26 degrees Celsius. And last, letter C, selecting the warm housing. The pictures illustrates that the vermi bed, warm beds, may be made out of different materials like iron, bars, old plastic basins, split bamboo, or hollow blocks. Okay, so to sum up, in applying recommended the kind and rate of fertilizer, we have to consider this. Letter A, the two kinds of fertilizer, which are the organic and inorganic. Letter B, the methods of fertilizer application, such as the broadcast method, localized method, foliar method, applied with the seed method, and fertigation method. Letter C is determining the soil fertility. It includes field fertilizer trials, soil analysis, plant tissue analysis, nutrient deficiency symptom, letter D, ways of conserving soil fertility. It includes plant trees, build terraces, no-till farming, contour plowing, crop rotation, apply fertilizers, utilize crop residue, watering the soil, utilize manure, and mulching. Letter E, methods of composting. It includes sheet composting, in vessel composting, anaerobic composting, trash composting, bokashi composting, composting barrels, and vermi composting. Points to ponder. You have to keep in mind that fertilizers are used daily by farmers and families to help crops and gardens grow. Whether for a small garden of flowers and plants or a large farm with thousands of acres of crops, a wide range of fertilizers have been developed to help different crops grow in different soil and weather conditions. Thus, composting enriches soil, helping retain moisture and suppress plant diseases and pests, reduces the need for chemical fertilizers and encourages the production of beneficial bacteria and fungi that break down organic matter. Okay now, I want you to do this activity number one. This considered as your written task. Go to your garden and observe. Diagnose your plants. Are they doing well? Do they need something? You found out that your plants suffer from nutritional deficiency. Okay, so you have to answer these following questions. Number one, what type of fertilizer material are you going to apply and why? Number two, do you need to consider the result of soil analysis? Why? And for your activity number two, as your performance task, construct a compost pit pile in your area or do it yourself compost pile. Follow the steps in composting. Your performance will be rated using the rubric below. These are the following criteria. 
First, we have skill set processes. It includes the proper use of materials. And if you follow all the steps correctly, that is equivalent to 45%. Next, we have the safety measures. It includes the use of personal protective equipment at all time. That is 35%. And last one is timeliness. It includes that you have to finish your work before the deadline. So that is 20%. So for a total of 100%. Okay, for your reflection, write at least two to three sentences after taking this lesson. I learned that blank and I realized that blank. Okay, so that's the end of our lesson one. I want you to compile all your answer sheets in your portfolio and be ready on the date of submission. I am your mom Heidi. Thank you and good luck.